Hi everyone, it's B. Today I'm going to be talking about what I like to call the pastelification of horror. Basically the trend that I've been noticing popping up more and more in recent years where horror characters from either movie or game franchises are being turned from something horrific, gory, and scary into something cute, pink, and pastel. In the video I made a little bit ago about goths versus preps, I talked about how what was once a war between goths and preps, or more simply people who just wear a lot of black and people who just wear a lot of pink, eventually evolved over the years from a rivalry to a staple of shipping culture via the odd couple trope where characters matching each of these descriptions are put in relationships either dating or just as best friends rather than being enemies because, simply put, people like the contrast between one dark gloomy character and one bubbly pastel one. I mean, just in the time since I made my Goss vs. Preps video, which wasn't even that long ago, a new example of this has come out, and one that's arguably even more relevant than the example I used in my previous video of Marceline and Princess Bubblegum from Adventure Time. I'm sure by now if you haven't watched it yourself, you've probably at least heard or seen screenshots or fan art for the new Netflix show Wednesday in which gloomy goth Wednesday Adams becomes roommates with a bubbly pastel-wearing girl named Enid, and they become best friends, even though literally everyone just thinks they should date. This huge shipping culture surrounding Wednesday and Enid specifically really drives home the point I made in my Goss vs. Preps video about how far we've come since the days of Goss and Preps being considered mortal enemies. Now when you put one goth and one pastel-wearing character in a room together, everyone thinks they should date instead. You get my point. It's a good thing. You can consider this video like a sequel to my Goss vs. Preps video because this phenomenon I've been noticing has followed a very similar path. In the past, the general sentiment was, as far as media consumption goes, was that fluffy sentimental rom-coms were for preps or people who just wear a lot of pink, and dark, gory horror movies were for goths or people who just wear a lot of black. I think most people would agree that it's much easier to imagine someone who wears all pink watching a rom-com rather than a horror movie, and it's easier to imagine someone who wears all black watching a horror movie rather than a rom-com. In recent years, I've noticed that stereotype is slowly beginning to change, and similar to how goth and pastel characters have begun being shipped rather than expected to hate each other indefinitely, horror is becoming cuter. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, maybe you've seen pictures floating around on Twitter in the past few months of an all-pink pyramid head or fan art of different slasher character-inspired Barbies. This is what I mean by horror is becoming cuter. I think it's really interesting to see this overlap because it's not really something I would have really ever expected to see. Horror, and I think the Silent Hill games are a really great example of this, are typically dark, dingy, rusty, bloody, gory, and generally kind of disgusting. The contents of horror media are meant to be disturbing and scary, and the antagonists are meant to terrify viewers and creep into their nightmares. Somewhere along the way, though, I think that kind of got lost in translation, as many people instead have adopted these antagonists as their comfort characters, or crushes, there's a lot of those people out there too, and molded them to better fit in non-horror-related scenarios. Search Pyramid Head on Tumblr, and some of the first results you'll see are drawings of Pyramid Head wearing all pink and a Hello Kitty backpack, a nurse's dress, sparkly pyramid heads, sexy pyramid heads, a lot of sexy pyramid heads, like a lot. And that's just one example. You can do the same for just about any slasher you can think of. Michael Myers, Jason, Freddy, Bubba Sawyer, and more than all else, Ghostface. Ghostface has become Tumblr's little meow meow, and I'm sorry I just said that out loud, ew, but the sheer amount of cat-eared, pink-cloaked ghost faces I have seen is off the freaking charts. I'm not complaining, though. I can't think of anything more geared towards me than taking terrifying, gory, horror franchise characters and making them cute and pastel. I know this may come as a shock to you, but seeing as I make women of survival horror videos, I do in fact both like cute pink things and gross horror things. Shocking, I know. Take a moment to collect yourself. Now this might seem like it's a relatively new concept, but I think the idea of taking disturbing things and making them cute or pastel originated with J fashion styles like Menhera, sorry if I butchered that, and Yami Kawaii, which started in the late 2000s with art styles like Pastel Guru, and within the goth subculture with the creation of Pastel Goth in the 2010s, as well as taking inspiration from yandere characters. Just to give you a quick overview of what the hell I'm talking about, Menhera is a J-fashion style that focuses on drawing attention to mental illness. Menhera is a Japanese term for people who experience mental illness, and the fashion style surrounding it utilizes imagery of medical equipment, syringes, pills, band-aids, box cutters, and gauze. Yami kawaii is another J fashion style that, instead of putting emphasis on typical kawaii things like cutesy pink style choices, puts more emphasis on dark colors and themes and is very closely related to Menhera and uses similar imagery. 
Pastel Goth, though I mentioned it very briefly in my Goss vs. Preps video as well, was created in the 2010s and was very popular on Tumblr. Pastel Goth fashion mixes things like pastel pinks, purples, and blues with black clothing, incorporating things like eyeballs, pentagrams, skulls, and upside down crosses. In a very similar vein to Pastel Goth is the Pastel Guru art style, which is sort of tangentially related. The art style is basically exactly what it sounds like. Pastel or cutesy characters mixed with copious amount of gore and viscera, again an art style based on creating as much contrast between dark and light as possible, or in this case, gore and cuteness. Don't google that unless you're ready for it. And tangentially related to that are yandere characters, a character archetype often found in anime or manga typically describing a female character who is so obsessed with their love interest that they become insanely jealous, killing people close to their love interest to draw them closer to them without having to worry about other people getting in the way of their love. They may engage in stalking their obsessions and go to extreme measures to earn their love and attention. These characters are often unassuming looking girls and their sick obsessive nature greatly contrasts with their otherwise cutesy appearances. These instances where instead of something scary becoming cute, something cute becomes scary have been popular as well, and examples of this can be found in games like Doki Doki Literature Club and Dreamy Mary, for example. I'd like to mention here that I'm happy that games like these kind of break down the barrier of horror games are for boys and cute games are for girls. That stereotype has always annoyed me because what's the point in limiting girls to just Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing when there are so many other great games out there that they can be interested in? So if making things cute and pastel kind of incentivizes them to maybe try out a type of game that they would never play otherwise, that's great. I love that. Based on all of these potentially related instances of things that are dark, gruesome, and scary being turned into something cute and masked with pastel colors and an abundance of pink, or vice versa, I think it's safe to say that just about anything that's scary or terrifying can easily be made more aesthetic or more palatable to a wider audience when pastelified. It may just be that having more macabre interest just doesn't fit in with the artist or person's aesthetic, so they take the macabre and make it cuter to better fit in with the aesthetics that they enjoy more, or it could just be to mask the fear that they feel, so they choose to make the things that scare them cute instead. It kind of makes it more digestible and more approachable when it's pink rather than, you know, covered in blood. Or both. It can be pink and covered in blood, I guess. It, that makes it a little bit less scary, too. <laughs> Personally, as someone who likes both horror and pastel things, it's definitely appealing to me to make the horror things cuter to match the rest of my interests rather than changing all of my interests to better fit in with being interested in horror. Pastelifying horror kind of acts as a bridge to make the common interests you might have seem more acceptable, and having them kind of match everything else you're interested in is kind of like an incentive to engage with that kind of media more since it isn't seen as being as dark or as gruesome as it really is. Either way, I just think it's really interesting that characters, franchises, and media of all kinds have shifted away from the polarizing view of having dark scary things be for goths or boys, and pink glittery things only be for people who wear a lot of pastels or girls. It's nice that it's becoming more acceptable to just like the things you like, even if they don't exist within the realm of what you're supposed to like based on how you look or what gender you are. Honestly, I love pastel horror things. They're great and they like super cater towards my interests, so it's always a win-win for me. Growing up in the early 2000s, gaming was a lot more gendered back then. Basically, the general consensus was like, Nintendogs and Animal Crossing and dress-up games are for girls because they don't have any scary motifs in them. They're very sterile, you know? And games for boys have guns and violence, and they don't want to keep girls anywhere near that because those games aren't for girls, they're just for boys. So it's nice that the younger generation doesn't have to deal with that as much, and it's a lot less gendered than it used to be, and if a little bit of that still kind of exists and making things pastel makes games like that, more approachable for girls to maybe get interested in, that's awesome because, you know, there are so many awesome horror games out there and I feel like the way that we talk about them, we make it sound like those are just for boys. Girls shouldn't play those, they're too gross. But like, girls can like horror too. So it's kind of nice that pastelifying horror has made it more possible for girls to get interested in the darker side of gaming, I guess, instead of just keeping themselves in a little bubble of what they think is acceptable for them to play. Because horror can be cute too, as we've seen. 
Basically, what I'm trying to say is I'm just glad that the stereotypes that certain types of games are only for certain types of people are finally being broken down, so keep pastelifying horror, keep making slashers cute, and keep making it easier for people to bridge the gap between Ooblets and Silent Hill or vice versa without the fear of thinking that they're only allowed to like certain types of games based on what they look like, the other interests they have, or what gender they are. Life is too short, there are too many great games out there. Play what you want to play and make it as cute or as scary as you want. I'm not sure that this video really has like a super definitive point that I'm trying to make. I just think that this is something that's really interesting to me and I think is cool and somewhat kind of related to my Goths vs. Preps video, so I thought I'd write about it just to get it out of my head. This is like a big brain dump video because I didn't have to research a single thing for this video and I usually do, so thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a good day or night or whatever time it is wherever you are and I will see you all again next time.